So, uh, just how holy are you? <laughs> that all depends, man. <laughs> what day of the week it is. <laughs> Let's say on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Wednesday, no. Actually, I think uh, I try to live a good life if I can. You know, mm. I, uh, I never look down upon anybody that's into drugs or alcohol. You know, that's not my way. I, I try to help out the best way I can. I think when I first started, I was just all gung ho, you know, like, you know, yeah, I want to save everybody. You know? <laughs> I want to take everybody here and take everybody there and let's go to the culture, let's go to ceremonies. But now I'm a little bit more relaxed and I realize that uh, everybody has their own path and they'll decide if they're going to go to go to the ceremonies or go to church, whatever it is, you know. So mm. if they can do that and find that, you know. All more, all more power to them. That's, that's, way. Way it, that's the way I look at things. So. That's a good way to look at things. Right on. So, on that note, do you think yeah. it's important for ur urban Indians to learn their culture? Oh, definitely. I think it's. Uh, I think it's important for any First Nation to learn who they are. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter where they are, whether in a town, city, country. I think it's just as important as anybody who lives right in the res to learn their culture as it is some for somebody in the city. There's no big difference. Uh, Cool. Yeah, no, I can't. Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah, yeah. So a, a little more of a serious question, kind of hearkening to what you're saying before. Yeah. Um, a great sadness seems to be carried by our young folk. And what can we do as adults to help with that? Well, I think uh, what we talk about, I think, is that uh, land-based healing is very important. Yeah, and could you elaborate on land-based healing? I think land-based healing is when we actually take them out to the out to the land and we give them a little bit of a taste of what our old people used to go through, mm. whether it was just fishing or hunting or ceremonies or, or just being out in the land walking and uh, having maybe an elder talk to them about the, the plants, mm. about the trees, you know, about how we're connected to all these things and how we're connected in between the stars and Mother Earth and all that good stuff, you know, and what we're doing out here in, in, in this uh, life that we're walking. So you want to make sure that I think uh, a lot of it has to do with respect. Yes. Yeah, respecting yourself and respecting the land and, and, and being taught that a lot of people are not really taught that anymore. We're, we're living too fast of a life now. Mm. Well, yeah, if you can't, if you don't yeah. know how to respect the land or respect your health, yeah. how are you going to respect yourself? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we're living too fast of a life and I think we need to uh, slow down sometimes. I think and that's what happens. Uh, the parents are, well, a lot of times we have single parents now and it's a little different uh, compared to the old days where we had, you know, we, at least we had our cookums and our mushrooms there to, to take over in some situations. We don't always have that anymore. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. so uh, you kind of answered this one, but I'll, maybe you can elaborate. Um, so you said that you've been sober for 14 years. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, why? I was really, really getting a little carried away. I, I was actually into selling drugs. Oh, snap. Yeah, I was into selling drugs. I was doing things for all the wrong reasons. Um, my wife was fed up with it. So, you know, so I started to drink a little bit more. Mm. Uh, broke up with the wife, started to party. Then all of a sudden, one day I was sitting there and I was drinking for a few days. And uh, I never drank that much before. Like I. I would drink, but I wouldn't go like that for a long time because of my children. Right, you wouldn't like binge yeah, or anything. Yeah. So then I broke up with her and I was sitting there inside of a trailer and I had my camping trailer and all of a sudden my uncle was sitting there with me. I still don't know how he got in my trailer. <laughs> I thought I locked the door, right? But, the spirit <laughs> came through. <laughs> and I think, uh, yeah, he came there next to me, he was sitting in front of me and he told me, uh, nephew, you know, uh, i never seen you like this for a long time, you know, I think you're going down the wrong road. He said, hey, for, he said sober up. No drinking, no drugs for four days, and come and see me again. I wanted, to, I wanted to go for a ride with you. Mm -hmm. So he did, and uh, I did that. And for four days, it's it's very tough to do that, you know, when you're a drug addict and, a, and an alcoholic. Yeah, okay, no, for real. You, know, like you just feel like you're missing out on something after those four days. But uh, I finally went to go see him. Had my van, had some money, and he took me and he took me to a to a ceremony with a Dakota fellow in Manitoba. Oh wow! And uh, Took me to a, it's kind of it's kind of like what we call a night lodge in our Cree way. I think they call it Luwampi in their in their in their language. But uh, I walked out of that ceremony, and in that ceremony it was I don't really want to elaborate on the ceremony yeah. itself. But uh, what happened there is I walked out of there, and I realized that our way of life was alive. Our religion, our way of spirituality, is alive, and I never ever experienced that in my life. I was brought up uh, Roman Catholic. My mom was United Church. 
I have sisters and brothers that are Christian. Yeah. My older sister's a Jehovah Witness, so and my one of my older brothers goes to ceremony, so it was funny. I found a ceremonial way of life, and I think that's kind of what helped me. After that day, I never looked back. I uh, I went to a lot of ceremonies after that, and after that, I, I just quit dr drugs and alcohol, cold turkey like that. Wow. Well, that's a wonderful story. Yeah, Thanks for sharing with that. It's really cool. So, with that in mind, what about marijuana? <laughs> <laughs> that marijuana there, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it wasn't legal for us back in those days, eh? so it was a business for us. <laughs> cool, right on. Well, we're getting close to the end of our interview here, but um, before you go, I, I do have some sage here. Um, can you share, share a story about sage? Well, I think uh, I was always told there's, there's four main things that we always have, and I'm glad that you gave me the tobacco earlier, Stamo. We always say we have that tobacco. We have sage, we have cedar, and we have sweetgrass, and they always say that you can find one of these elements anywhere in the world all the time. So we're never without our without our four sacred objects that we have. So, mm. And that's one thing that we have. They always say that the woman, even on her time, the sage is so pure that she can smudge with this stuff all the time too, eh? And uh, so we always use sage to smudge when we're going to smudge everybody, mm. so that everybody is always and you know, always uh, what do you call equal, eh? Like we're always respectful that way. Because some, uh, some girls like them in their moon time, you know, then, then they're very, very sacred at that time. And mm -hmm. they're very strong and powerful at that time. So. But I'm always told that no matter when you have this stuff in your hand before you light it, you always say a prayer and you always give direction to this spirit that's inside the sage all the time too. You give it, you give it direction and it, they always say it'll help you in a good way. Mm. My uncle always does that all the time inside of his ceremonies all the time. He'll sit and talk to Cree in, in Cree for a long time at the beginning of his ceremonies. And then he tells us in English that I just gave direction to this smudge that I'm using right now to help us and guide us today. That's what it's, uh, that's what it's used for, he says too. So with this smoke, it'll take, a, take our prayers for us, he always says. So that's a, you know, the answer. I'm not going to go and elaborate yeah. too much because uh, well, you got you got to you got to earn your stripes to learn more <laughs> stuff, right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, another, another, just a kind of a surface answer from you um, is I have two eagle feathers here. I've I've earned these. Um, can you share why we award these to people? Well, I think I think these eagle feathers are they're so sacred and it goes right back to a, a creation story that I heard not too long ago from an elder too and he talked about the eagle. He talked about the eagle taking that uh, taking that message to the creator for us and even then he found jealousy from other objects. Uh, I won't say which ones but there was jealousy there but the eagle knowing that he had that uh, he had that uh, gift to go and see the creator after that too. That's the reason I was told and there's even a race between an eagle and a wolf, I was told, and uh, I can't really talk too much, too much about it because these elders uh, didn't really finish the story with me and I, I have to learn that story more. Mm. But the eagle feather, I was really told, is it, it balances out an eagle. They always say that uh, this is your walk in life a lot of times, they always say this walk of life right here, the middle part of your, is your walk of life, he says. And, Parts of that eagle feather on the left and parts on the right are like drugs and alcohol and women and everything else, he says. So that's how tough it is sometimes to walk that red road, they always say. Mm -hmm. When you walk down to the middle of that red road, they say, they say that that old man told me when I first started to go to ceremony with him, he says that that's where your pipe is going to be sitting, he says. When they start to see all these little troubles, they'll throw a lot of little troubles your way, little roadblocks, and they'll see how you're going to act around them when it comes down to it, eh? So, but I was always told that these things really mean a loss, these eagle feathers, and I see they're not being respected as much uh, as when we were young. We had to, we had to really, they, they talked to us about these eagle feathers, uh, not to be on drugs or alcohol and be around these eagle feathers, or even wear them on your head or wear them around you. Mm -hmm. They said, put them away if you're going to do those kind of things or give them to somebody who could look after them for you at that time. So. But these things are a really high sacred gift, I was told. Mm. Like you probably got them from graduating or something like that. Or oh, you did some events. sweats and yeah. some fasting, different yeah. events too, yeah. yeah. And they always say that when you first go to ceremonies, a uh, person should always have an eagle feather when he's praying there. They always say that eagle feather always takes that, uh, takes that message to you, the Creator, all the time. So that's the reason why they tell you, for the ones that go to sweats and they're first starting to sweat a lot of times, take that eagle feather in with you and pray with it all the time. Wow. Always keep that eagle feather with you, they say. 
I still have money, I think, that was given to me to go and sweat. A lot of times I don't take the sweat now, I kind of forget, but <laughs> make sure I have the drum and the rattle with me at all times and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. But I always say these are very sacred, uh, and the eagle, uh, a lot of times you'll see the eagle staffs too. The eagle staffs are used, and that used to be our flags at one time, and people always have flags for their communities now. But we never had it at one time. We always had eagle staffs all the time. Mm. Eagle staff always went first. They always sat in front of the people all the time. And usually the warriors always took that eagle staff all the time. And they were always from, usually a spotted eagle, I was told, from the black spotted eagle, because they always say that eagle, just before he reaches that, where that spotted eagle, he usually has spots till he's four years old. Then when he's turning five years old, that's when they finally have the ball-headed eagle. They say that, that e that's the eagle that flies the highest and will talk to the creator for us all the time. Right? So they'll have those, those really spotted feathers, they said. Right? So uh -huh. That's what I was told one time, too. So I did listen. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. He listens. <laughs>